So, here we are with the film that is being considered the best Dr. Seuss movie adaptation, Horton, Here's a Who. And no, I won't be rhyming for this review, that's asking too much. For those who aren't familiar with the book, it's got the same plotline as the movie. In fact, I read that book in my Dr. Seuss reading month. Anyways, just like in the book, the story goes around the jungle of Newell, where Horton finds a speck of dust that he believes he hears people living inside called the Who's. However, Sour Kangaroo doesn't believe him, even though she doesn't call him a fool, or the biggest fool in the jungle of Newell, as the book says. The animation is really great. The characters look like how they are in the book. Fun fact, in order to make the movie, they showed Dr. Seuss's wife, Audrey Geisel, some drawings and models of Horton, and she liked them. She gave the rights to the book to Blue Sky Studios, and even access to the Dr. Seuss archives in case the studio wanted to adapt more stories from her husband's books. If only Blue Sky Studios didn't shut down. I also love how there are a few instances where the animation styles change. The hand-drawn part resembles Dr. Seuss's style quite flawlessly. And I really love the anime scene. I love Horton. He's quite cheery and positive, like me. I may have said this before in my review of Sonic the Hedgehog, but I think it's worth repeating. I love Jim Carrey and not just the movie I mentioned, but also this movie as well. The delivery he shows is quite goofy for an elephant. Then there's the mayor, voiced by Steve Carell, who also voiced Gru in Despicable Me, and even this squirrel. Like this cookie? Oh. Well, this cookie's junk! I, I like a cookie. In fact, both Jim and Steve actually started another film together known as Bruce Almighty. Sour Kangaroo is just alright. While she is quite a jerk, I can let it slide since she is like that in the book, and then redeems herself by the end of the story. Absurd. There aren't people that small. Then there's the mayor, the board. I hate the board. They are the absolute worst, because they just give the mayor a hard time. They follow my least favorite cliche, the I don't believe you cliche. The way the movie portrays the board just grinds my gears because they are being jerks to the mayor for no reason. Although it was quite funny to see the chairman get karma for being rude earlier when he is called the same thing he called the mayor. This is the chairman. Idiot. You're finished in this town. Is that understood? Finished? You boob. <laughs> I'm just joking. The humor in this is really funny. The slapstick, Seth Rogen as Morton, and even the chase with the vulture Vlad. Speaking of which, I love Vlad. His line deliveries just steal the show every time he's in it. Until he disappears from the film in the climax. You'd think he would take part in the action in the angry mob, but no, not really. Other than that, the climax here is quite intense. While it does have the I don't believe you cliche I mentioned earlier, the music gives the feeling as if the animals can hear the who's. The visuals resemble parts of the original illustration, even though they add a few elements to it, like it was only the monkeys that followed Sour Kangaroo. Not the entire jungle of Nil. It was quite epic the way they made McDodd's mute son finally speak, which made everyone be able to hear the who's. I love the moral of a person's a person no matter how small, and the movie references a lot of the book. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. And by noon, poor Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005. But wait, could this one be the one? Was all his searching finally done? Ah, yes, for this was the hour. Horton had found them on the three millionth flower. Rope him! Cage him! <laughs> Burn that speck in a pot of boiling bees on that oil! There are also a few moments where they focus on attention to detail. The raindrop forming in the leaves. The clover field near the end of the film really shows how the clover Horton's looking for is almost impossible to find. The song at the end is alright, but it's not great. While it does have a nice beat, it tends to be out of tune with the singing. And this may be nitpicking, but I don't really get why that's there. <sighs> While the anime segment can be distracting for some people, I still think it's really funny. Overall, Horton Hears a Who is good. It was the saving grace for Dr. Seuss adaptations after the guilty pleasure movie of Jim Carrey's Grinch, and the universally hated <laughs> Even if a producer moved on to make Illumination, to make his own Dr. Seuss movie adaptations, which were quite controversial to say the least. 
I give it a 7 out of 10 with the ribbon of awesomeness. Stay tuned for when I review a movie in the Jurassic Times, Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs.